Welcome to our ADM Lucid Automation Testing channel. We'll have a series of talk about Selenium Automation Testing, which will help you better understand the basics of Selenium and also guide you to build your own Selenium Automation Project. You may access our test project and guide in the description below. Feel free to subscribe to our channel for any new videos and updates. In today's video, we will talk about how to use extant reports and screenshots in Selenium Automation Testing. So with the extent libraries, you can create beautiful and interactive detailed reports for your tests. In these reports, you can add events, screenshots, tags, devices, authors, or any relevant information you want so that you think it would be useful later on when you're looking at the output. Before you do that, one thing you need to do is you need to update your pond.xml file and you need to add this dependency right here. This dependency is needed to create these extent reports. Next, what you need to do is in the class that you're writing the code, you need to import the classes. So here are three lines that you would write in the beginning of your class where you import the extent reports, you uh, import the extent HTML reporter and the extent test. After that, Within the class itself, now you have to create a few instances. So first here, you would have to do, uh, you have to create a new uh, ex extent HTML reporter here. And then you would also have to uh, create a test uh, using uh, this uh, method right here. And then you can try various things. So here you can try a command here, and if it passes, then you'll write detail. And uh, if there, there is no command to perform on that element, then you can catch an exception, and you can pass the exception to your extent report. And uh, we've been through this a couple of times. This is just to show you the sort of general structure of this. Now, to take screenshots, there are two different methods native to Selenium that you can just use directly. So the first one is where you capture a screenshot of the entire browser directly. And this is an example of that. So uh, to take a screenshot, you would just um, use it. So you, you get the browser uh, URL that you want to look at. And then this line right here is just to take the screenshot. So you just uh, get screenshot as and then you, uh, you take a screenshot using this line of code. However, there is another way that you can take screenshots in Selenium. And this is to take a screenshot of a specific element on your web browser. So instead of taking a screenshot of the entire screen, you can take a screenshot, for instance, of this line only, and then you can save it. And to do that, uh, you can use this uh, method native to Selenium uh, instead. So you can do uh, this. So you can do uh, web element, you define the element that you want, and then you can take a screenshot of that element. Next, we're going to look at our code. Uh, and we're going to show you the steps that we mentioned earlier uh, to use extent reports. So first we must go to our palm.xml file here and we must enter the dependency. So right here we have entered the dependency extent reports. Next I'm going to go to the controller class booking and I'm going to show you how we set it up. So first as we mentioned earlier here we have to import the extent reports, extent test, and extent HTML reporter here. So after we import that, we have to create some new instances. So right here, we create an extent report instance. We also create extent HTML report instances here as well. Now for each class, or uh, for each method, I mean, inside, we have to create a separate instance. So for instance, in the book Golf Course 2, we create an instance for the test, extent test, and we do this each time in each method. So let's just take a quick look at maybe like a line of code or something. So if we look at here, for instance, or let's see, uh, if we look at, if we look at right here, uh, first what we do is we use a bunch of try and catch statements. So here we're using try click button. So we're asking the program to click a button on the website. If the test passes, 
uh, we'll import insert this line of text into our extent report. And if it fails, uh, for instance, if some no such element exception error comes up, we catch the error and then we write this went wrong in our extent report. And you see, it says here, test fail. This is what we write into our extent report. Next, we use some more uh, try and catch statements. The first one is we try to take a screenshot and we try to catch an exception if it doesn't allow us to take a screenshot. Following that, we try to add the screenshot into our HTML report. So right here, it's just trying to add into HTML report and we're trying to catch any exception we get there. So uh, I'm just gonna quickly run this and uh, show you what we mean and what it looks like. So. Go here and then we can just run booking Chrome. And there, yeah, so we finished running that and that's using extent reports. Okay, so what we just did was we uh, just ran the extent reports. Now, what we did is we took a screenshot of the entire browser. However, sometimes you might want to take a screenshot of individual elements. So how can we do that? Well, first I'm just gonna uncomment these two lines of code which we just ran and I'm gonna comment out, uh, uncomment these codes, uh, these lines right here. And the main difference we have here is in this one, we're using get screenshot two, which takes a screenshot of each individual element. Whereas here, uh, we use get screenshot right here, and that takes a screenshot of the entire browser. So for instance, what we just ran, let me show you. So in the code that we just ran, we used the screenshot method, which takes a screenshot of the entire browser. For instance, if I open up the screenshot that was taken here, uh, this one right here, we see that it takes a screenshot of the entire browser. However, as we mentioned earlier, you also have the option to take a screenshot of individual elements in your browser. So I'm just gonna comment this line of code out and I'm gonna show you these two lines of code instead, which take a screenshot of individual elements in the browser. And the main difference in these two lines of code is right here. This one uses get screenshot, whereas this one uses get screenshot two, uh, which takes a screenshot of individual elements. Now we can run this again, but before we do that, I just wanna show you here, we also have the option for test.warning. So when a test warning shows up, we can add this into the extent report. Whereas earlier, we only used uh, test pass and test fail. So I'm gonna go down back to book in Chrome. So I'm gonna save. I'm going to go book in Chrome and I'm going to run this again. So, and now that's complete, let us open this up. So I'm gonna go by modify date. So this is the one we just ran. Uh, and if I open up the screenshot, it's just a small element on the website. Uh, and some of you might wonder why did we use booking warning instead for this, uh, this one right here. Uh, the reason is sometimes when the, uh, when the screenshot's too small, uh, you're not able to add it onto the uh, HTML file and so we use warning to catch that warning instead. And yeah, if we open up the, the HTML uh, extent report file, for instance, you don't see the screenshot down here because we were unable to add it onto it. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe.